Mina, Konnichiwa, Jesus Freaky Gamer. I was like, is it Ohio Gazimus or Konnichiwa? It is officially Konnichiwa from where I'm coming from. It is past noon. This video is not taken from a Bible verse or from a scripture. I was looking to my Bible over there. It's not coming from there. It's actually coming from a question I got, a very, very good question, a very serious question. Um, the dude's name is Tekken Center, and he has an amazing Shao Kahn avatar. I salute you, sir. That is amazing. Uh, obviously, a huge Mortal Kombat fan if you guys have been looking at my channel recently. And this guy actually came here from my MKX videos and had a very good question to ask. And so I was like, you know, this is so good. I'm going to give an answer to this. By the way, Tekken, Tekken Center, I said that I would respond to you like on my next day's video. For me, this is the next day. My next days usually roll into the next day. That sounds really weird. For example, this is my Thursday video and I'm putting it out Friday at the beginning of the afternoon. Well, I didn't sleep Thursday night. And just because of my schedule, that's relatively normal for me to do. So I am keeping my word. I didn't forget and skip a day. I have done that in the past with some videos, but I didn't do that with you. I'm actually shooting this prior to getting ready for bed. I wanted to make sure that I got this in before the end of the day. I put up the video game video already, Mortal Kombat X. So hopefully you will enjoy that, and hopefully this answer will be a sufficient one. It won't be... Whenever we're t the question itself revolves around hell, and that's not a very pleasant subject, but a very, very important one. So the answer may not be to your liking, it may not be the nicest answer, but um, I'm going to do my best to be objective, truthful, and answer it fully. And if you have any questions or contentions, by all means, let me know in the comments section down below. Now, for all of you guys, you're probably like, okay, could you just tell us what the question is already? I'm going to read this directly from my comments section. Again, the guy's name is Tekken Center. I sort of got here from the MKX videos, LOL, but for the sake of debate, I have a question for you. Do you really think that we have free will? Imagine that a robber attacks you and holds you at a gunpoint. He tells you he will kill you unless you give up your possessions to him. He tells you that you are free to make either of the choices, i.e. to surrender your possessions or to get shot and killed instead. Now replace the robber with God and the gun with hell. Again, free will lets you decide between believing in God or not believing and being sent to hell. In this scenario, the consequences of choosing the latter option is actually much worse because the suffering does not end with a gunshot to the head, but lasts for an eternity. So I ask you, is this truly free will? Would anyone say that they had free will in the robber scenario? Very important question, and I think a very solid one. So, on to the answer. First off, I want to say yes. Free will absolutely exists there. In fact, the fact that you can die um, the fact that the robber will shoot you if you do not give him your money, that absolutely proves you have free will. Yeah, you'll take your money once you're dead, but you did say no. You did got shot, you did got shot, you did get shot, and you did get killed. So you absolutely had free will there because you got shot and killed. So yeah, I mean, now is the option vastly inferior to the first option of letting your money go and keeping your life? Absolutely. I would totally agree with that. That's the superior option. But rather, free will is proven through the scenario, not in question. Again, to um, put this on the level of God, hell, versus a robber and a gun, you, cho you choose God or you will burn in hell. And I do believe, I'm going to expound upon that in a minute, but for the sake of simplicity here, that's true enough. I don't have to really correct anything. And once again, like I just said, actually, because I believe God is real and hell is real, and you do have to choose, that actually proves free will rather than putting it in question. The fact that God will send you to hell because you've said no to him, the fact that he's willing to send you to hell despite him wanting you to be saved. And it's talked about in 1 Timothy that God doesn't want anyone lost, but rather he wants all to be saved. So despite the fact that he will send you to hell against his own desire, that kind of solidifies the fact that free will is a thing. It is something that goes against our Creator's will. Therefore, it absolutely defines and prof 
profligate, profligates, I think that's the right word there. Maybe I'm overstretching my bounds and speaking a little too big, but it absolutely proves that free will exists because he will send you to hell 100%. Free will is true and is a real thing. Now to put this, so that's the answer, but I don't think that quite does the question justice. So I want, if you'll bear with me, Tech and Center and the rest of my viewers, I want to go on just a little bit further. I want to give two more analogies that I think explain God's position a little bit better rather than just a robber who is going to save you or going to send you to hell. And doggone it, that's all you've got to choose. The first scenario I'm going to call the crazed billionaire. So you're, you're doing your business, let's just put you in a shopping center. You're doing your business in a shopping center, buying what you need to buy, and all of a sudden this crazy man runs up to you, points a gun at your face, and he says, you will either take this million dollars or I'm going to kill you right here. And let's for the, for the sake of this scenario, well, even if it's not for the sake of the scenario, let's say the guy's dead broke, but you either take the check for a million dollars, whether or not he's telling the truth or completely crazy or not, I was thinking he would be telling the truth, but it really doesn't matter if he is or not. You take the check for a million dollars and live, or you reject the million dollars and you get shot and killed. Under those scenario, under that scenario, who in their right mind would reject the check? And I mean that very, it's a ridiculous scenario, but take it serious for just a second. If this happened, who in their right mind would say no? If it's a real million dollar check, which I would seriously doubt, great, you just got a million dollars. That's amazing. On top of not only being alive, you don't have a million dollars to live with. That's awesome. That's great. And if he's just a crazy man, which is highly more likely, then you have escaped with your life. You obviously can't take that check to the bank, but you're alive. And the crazy, crazy guy just keeps on doing his crazy thing until the authorities come and take him away. But you're alive, not a penny richer, not a penny poor, but you're alive. And God, he owns the cattle on a thousand hill. That's in the Psalms. Um, he is rich beyond word. It also says in 2 Corinthians that he traded in his riches for our poverty to make us rich. So if anything, we're not being robbed. We're being given the offer of a lifetime a life-changing offer that will radically make our lives better and give us everything our hearts desired. I guess that would technically be more than a million dollars, but for the sake of analogy. Excuse me. So there's that scenario. There's that analogy. And I believe, I, I want to take it out of the perspective of God being a robber and more of a giver because the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. God comes to give us life and that much more abundantly. And now for the final scenario, which is the most realistic and the most biblical, if we're taking Jesus, the Christian God, and the Bible into account. The most real scenario here is your the righteous judge scenario. Or I should say the forgiving. Well, he's righteous, but he's also forgiving. So the righteous and forgiving judge. You're standing before the judge, and the judge reads off the list of crimes against you, and you know you've done each and every one of the things that the judge has said you've done, and you're guilty of all these things. And more than that, the judge also presents evidence against you. And the evidence is undeniable, even in your own sight. And you're guilty, and you know you are. And the penalty is death. And the judge makes an offer to you, and he says, here's the deal. I can annul all of these charges against you. You'll walk away a free man. Or you'll pay the penalty for all these wrongdoings, which is the death penalty. And I leave it up to you. What do you want to do? That is the most realistic scenario because that takes into account the situation that we're actually in. We are all sinners. We've all done things that are wrong. We deserve judgment. We deserve that gunshot. We deserve that death. We deserve hell. But God, he took the bullet and the hell for us when he, as Jesus Christ, died on the cross for us. So we have an option. 
accept his love and forgiveness, accept his kindness and goodness and blessings, accept eternity in heaven with him forever, or pay the full price of our sins and burn in hell forever. Much more so than my first analogy, it's very plain and simple to see which of the two is the obvious option, which one you should choose. You know you're guilty, it's proven you're guilty, and you have a chance for complete forgiveness. Or you pay the price, which is your death. The choice is abundantly obvious. You want the million dollars. You want to live. You want all of the charges against you annulled. Not that they're not dropped, they are true, but annulled. You're guilty, but you're not held accountable for any of it. Although I guess in the most um, realistic, I was like to make it even more realistic, the judge says, I'll take the death penalty for you, which is what happened on the cross. So Tech and Center, that is my response. Uh, I'm gonna make I'm gonna post another response. I, I said, hey, um, you know, I'm gonna make a video about this, and here's the video, so I'm gonna upload it now. And I'm gonna leave a comment underneath my first comment saying, hey, the video's up. So hopefully you'll get a chance to see this. Thank you very much for asking this question. And the very and just to end this video, my dream for this channel was for people to see the the, the video game videos that I make, the silly videos. I love video games to pieces, but I love Jesus much more. And that maybe they would see those videos that happen to stumble across my preaching videos and take an interest. So Tech and Center, you literally fulfilled my YouTube dream and my YouTube goal. And if you think that my answer was not complete, uh, please let me know. Um, either way, you did. You literally just fulfilled my YouTube dream. So thank you very, very much for that. I could not be happier that one of my video game videos actually, even if it was only for a moment, got someone interested in my biblical videos. That is awesome. I, I'm going to keep doing YouTube. I'm not going to stop now, but goal accomplished. Like literally, that's exactly what I set out to do. So I could not be happier at this point in time. So thank you, Tech and Center. Hopefully you saw this, and thank you to anyone else who watched this video. And if you do want to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you can say a prayer right now. You don't need to wait. You don't need to wait for my Sunday message. You don't even need to watch another message. You can accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior right now. And since this has been so gospel-centric, I'm going to shoot up a model prayer. So if you don't know how to put it into your own words, you just want a prayer to follow, follow this prayer. And say, Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sins. I admit I'm a sinner and I've done wrong. And I need your forgiveness. I believe you died on the cross. And I believe you rose again from the dead three days later. Guaranteeing me eternal life if I'll ask it. And I'm asking for it right now. So thank you, Lord, for hearing this prayer. Thank you for forgiving my sins. Thank you for making me your child. In Jesus' name, amen. And if you prayed that prayer, Welcome to the family and welcome to the Church of God. It is a pleasure and wonderful to have you. Um, be sure to not, you don't have to necessarily check out my channel anymore. You can if you want to, feel free. But more importantly than that, uh, read the Bible a little bit every day. It's very important. That'll get you to know your new God, your new master, your Lord and your Savior. It'll get you to know His heart his voice and what he wants for your life. Get involved in a, in a nearby church. Find a group of people who believe that Jesus is God, that the Bible is the Word of God, and in, that'll help encourage you in your faith. Make some Christian friends and also make sure to pray just a little bit to God each day. It doesn't have to be a ton. It can be, but it doesn't have to be. It's just a simple thank you, God, for the day, or God, I need help. Please help me. Simple things like that are prayers. They count. And God hears them. Guys, thank you very much for watching this video. I love you, and God bless.